Let's rock, baby. In 1998, following the tail end of Resident Evil 3, Nemesis, Capcom began working on the next installment into the series, Resident Evil 4. Yet during early development, as the game began to take shape, it was apparent that its formula divulged too far from the beaten path established by the prior titles. This resulted in Hideki Kamiya, the director of Resident Evil 4 during that time, to split off with that development team and make an entirely new team. Thus. Devil May Cry was born. As of June 30th, 2021, the Devil May Cry series has sold over 24 million copies and within its six titles has safely made a name for itself amongst Capcom's other high grossing intellectual properties. While it is nice seeing a series many know and enjoy improving in every installment, I wanted to take a look back at a much simpler time in the gaming industry. A time when developers and publishers were willing to try innovative ideas without the fear of less money in their wallets for the fiscal year. With having played through the first Devil May Cry again recently, I wanted to focus on what worked in the game and what did not. Yet it became apparent to me during this process that it would make more sense to take a look at Capcom during that time before diving into the game as this would provide a better backstory as to why certain options were chosen over others during the making of Devil May Cry before looking at the end result. Back in 1998, the Resident Evil series had just taken off. Capcom had Resident Evil 1 and 2 under their belt, while Resident Evil 3 Nemesis was still in development, which would then be released the following year. With the PlayStation 2 releasing in October of 2000, it makes sense as to why Capcom was already getting the wheels turning for Resident Evil 4. The PlayStation 1 would soon be a relic of the past due to the stronger hardware the next generation would bring. Hideki Kamiya, the director for Resident Evil 2, which was released in January of the very same year, was now tasked with bringing the series to the PlayStation 2. Consumers were hungry for the next installment of the newly created survival horror genre, and Capcom was more than willing to give them what they wanted. With each installment came better graphics, faster paced combat, and improved story and dialogue. But when the core of a game is changed, there are some unknowns developers have to deal with. At this point in time, however, Resident Evil has carved out a niche for itself, and the new project would once again go on to do the same. The prototype version of Resident Evil 4 was a story focused on a character by the name of Tony who possessed superhuman abilities. Tony wanted to figure out why his body was the way it was when compared to others. This scenario for the game was produced by Noboro Sugimura who set the foundation for Devil May Cry unknowingly at the time. Realizing this story and gameplay would not fit the mold of Resident Evil, it was then shifted into its own project. Tony became Dante, and a few characters from Sugimura's work was cut out, possibly to help simplify the story. Even though Tony does not exist, it is interesting to note that on both Dante's guns and Trish's guns, they have Tony's name engraved upon them. Even in the latest installment, Devil May Cry 5, Tony's name lives on. Regarding the core mechanics of Devil May Cry, new elements were introduced which helped to solidify its own niche just as Resident Evil did prior. The game itself is split into missions in which a player receives a score at the end dependent on their performance. This not only provides replayability to get the best score possible, but can allow the player to play the game in chunks if necessary. Additionally, the debut of the Stylish rank added another system into the fast-paced combat to challenge the player to use Dante to the best of their abilities. As the higher the rank, the higher the reward. The Devil Trigger also made its debut here, though explained minimally. Dante is able to increase his damage output and change appearance with respect to what weapon he has currently equipped. Devil May Cry also featured post-rendered backgrounds which allowed for a dynamic camera system. In a fast-paced action-based game, the camera can really make or break the game. Interestingly enough, during my research for Devil May Cry, Kamiya gave us a little more insight into the game for the series 20th anniversary. 
He stated that air combat in general for the game was inspired by Onimusha via an in-game bug. This allowed him to juggle enemies, which is what Devil May Cry is all about. With all of that background information out of the way though, let us dive into Devil May Cry and talk about what worked in the game and what did not. When it comes to an action game, you need, well, action, and Devil May Cry showed no fear in focusing purely on that. Keep in mind, this was back in 2001 where the only game that was in a similar vein to Devil May Cry was Onimusha Warlords which released 7 months before Devil May Cry. Dante is quite capable in his movement and once Air Hike in Stinger Level 2 is unlocked, his mobility gets even better. He is also capable of dodging any attacks rather than just simply walking away. This may not seem like a big deal in this day and age, but having a dedicated way to dodge moves in an action oriented game can make all the difference. Going further into the gameplay, Dante gets 4 weapons total in the game. Force Edge, Alistair, Ifrit, and Sparta. Alistair, which was my favorite and no surprise to anyone, felt really nice to use. Combos were easy to pull off with altering your timing with button pressing and the double trigger form also let Dante unleash some lightning bolts. Due to its decent range and high mobility in the form of Stinger, it is quite fun to use. Ifrit on the other hand was much more situational. With the close combat needed and fast moving enemies, it was a bit difficult at times to really use it to its maximum potential, but when you did, it felt great. Combined with the different sorts of guns, ranging from Ebony and Ivory to the Nightmare Beta, Devil May Cry had a decent gameplay loop, but the lack of aerial combat outside of Devil Trigger did feel a bit odd. While the boss and monster entries were limited, they too would throw down at the playground sometimes, which was nice. This helped to keep the player engaged as you needed situational awareness if you were going for a stylish combo as one hit during it could ruin the whole setup. Another aspect of Devil May Cry that worked was the mission setup as stated previously. By keeping each mission self-contained, it added a high level of replayability especially in regard to the secret missions. Most importantly with having missions done in this manner, a player can simply play their favorite stage or two to farm out orbs to upgrade their weapons or relive the experience without full commitment. What I really enjoy about this format is going back after your upgrades and seeing what you might have missed the first time. Now with the good comes the bad and well, let's talk about that. While the combos with Dante are decent as stated in what works, one of the downsides of Devil May Cry is the lack of enemy variety. The game contains 23 missions total, which some missions you sneeze and it's over. Other missions have you fighting the same spider for the 8th time which gets old quickly. Regular enemies were sufficient, but the lack of different bosses did get a bit annoying near the end. Swimming. Yes, swimming. I totally forgot this game had swimming in it and very quickly remembered why I forgot in the first place. It is terrible. It is weird but also a bit charming. The controls for the underwater segments are not good. Dante can shoot while underwater, but only when stationary and quite frankly, it does not feel needed. That is the most important part about a stage setup in a game. Is the action of player taking necessary? In this case, it was not. But I do give credit to the developers for being brave enough to try it. Plot wise, this game is also as bare bones as it gets. I know what some of you may be saying, Hey buddy, no one plays Devil May Cry for the plot. I hear you barking big dog, but the plot in this game is weird. Trish comes out of the bushes and attacks Dante. They go to a specific castle to take out a demon named Mundus. Dante fights Virgil who is not Virgil but also is and roll credits. At this point in Capcom's career as a whole, when it came to game storytelling, it was not something they excelled at, not at all. But unlike the Resident Evil series at that time, Devil May Cry did not have notes scattered all around the areas to fill the player in and most of the dialogue in the game happened at the start or at the end. This is what hurt the plot the most in this game. A little more dialogue here or there with actual people or even notes would have sealed the deal. Some of these points especially in concerns to Nilo Angelo get fleshed out later in the series, but looking at this game within itself. The whole Nilo Angelo experience was a bit bizarre. Like why does this random dude want to keep fighting me? Mundus has a personality of a doorknob. 
and the whole Trish thing, don't even get me started. I love it because it's just so cheesy. It goes from I hate you to Dante. Dante, why did you save my life? Because you look like my mother. Then it goes like, I should have saved you. I should have been the one to fill your dark soul with light. To like one of the cheesiest endings known to humanity, Dante, son of Sparta, the demon slayer, riding off into the sunset with a woman that looks like his mom. It really embodies that late 90s feeling and in a weird way, it is really good because it's so bad. Devil May Cry was a product of its time and after going through it again recently, it is easy to pick out many things in the game that did not age well, but with it being the first entry into a brand new series, experimentation is what creates innovation. This is not to say a new IP gets a pass on being terrible because it is new. It is more so to say that the good within the game far outweighs the bad. Additionally, expectations for games 20 years ago are far different than today. So, looking at the game during that time, along with what it brought to the table, makes sense as to why it was deemed successful. Dante, I, I... Trish, devils never cry. These tears, tears are a gift only humans have. 